So, uh, good evening for the second evening of, uh, let's say, some form of isolation sessions of the mobile exhibition Show Your Hope. And today I would like to tell you some stories about the diaspora. Don't ask me where is the diaspora because they're all around. But uh, why do I want to do this? That is because a uh, little bit part of our history. Um, we had been traveling around the world until this moment that the truck broke down completely. And I was like depressed, now what to do, you know? What, uh, how can you travel around the world when, when, when the machine doesn't function? And then I met this beautiful lady, Kira Foy, and she says, listen, my friend, you don't have to travel around the world to meet the world. You could, for example, also find the world in Netherlands. Uh, that was an interesting idea, because uh, indeed, we have a lot of nationalities in Holland. So we made this card box out of it with, with artists from Finland and from Russia and from, and from this selection, I don't want to show you the postcards, but I want to show you the paintings. So there's, for example, one painting here on this board here. This is a painting made by um, Franz Bodner, huh? Yes, hello, Franz. Franz made this really lovely painting and uh, pop art, eh, where things come together, but mainly the people come together. The painting is called Together We're Stronger, so that's what it is. However, if you make, uh, so he's an Austrian guy living in the Netherlands, but if you make a selection of artists, international artists living in the Netherlands, you get not only a lot of good stories, but you also get a lot of very serious stories. For example, one of the first that I was so much happy about is this painting. And this is a painting made by a man called Fatil Nema. And he's an Iraqi man living in The Hague. And he gave me this painting and I asked him, standard, traditional, can you tell me something about the relation between the image and the hope? And he says, uh, no, I cannot. So I said to him, but wait a minute. You know the task was to show your hope, right? Yes, 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 I know that. So you know the job is to show your hope, but you do not know what is the relation between the image and the hope. Correct, he says. I think, is this guy fooling me or what? So I try to be polite to him as well, and I ask him very friendly, Dear Fatil, can I ask you another five times? And Fatil looks at me and, why would you like to ask this five times? But he's also a friendly guy. He says, if you want to ask this five times, uh, go ahead. So I ask another time, and do you know the relation between the image and the hope? And he says, no. And I ask again, no, 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 five times no. And so I start wondering, what is going on? And he actually, he got me there. When I ask him the fifth time, he says, well, you know what? Maybe, uh, I do not know the relation between this image and the hope, but maybe we should not see this image as an image, but as a melody. I say, what do you mean? Well, he says, a melody has content, but no message. <laughs> this is one way how to find space. Or uh, meet this uh, friendly guy, funny guy, Krimo Era. And Krimo Era is a Moroccan guy from Middelburg. And if you know Middelburg, that is a place in Holland, which is on the islands in the southwest, completely at the end, you d never go there unless you need to go there. So this is not a place for transit or anything. And uh, so I told him, uh, he told me that he was finished, and I said, I will make an appointment with you one of these days, but it never happened because I never went that direction. I had to go the other directions. <laughs> and uh, finally, he sent it by post, and, uh, and I called him, and I said, uh, hey, um, Krimo, thank you very much for your painting. The painting is called... Uh, abstract composition in yellow and red. And I asked him, can you tell me something about hope? He says, well, there is, no, there is no hope in the painting. Oh, and he says, there's only uh, red and yellow and black paint in the painting. Yeah, I can see that, you know. And uh, he says, well, so I was kind of pushing him a little bit, and he says, well, if you really want to tell a story with the painting, Maybe don't tell a story about the painting, but tell a story about me. You say, in what way? Well, he says, you know, I am uh, from Moroccan origin. That is a minority in Holland 
which has uh, quite a negative uh, image, not because of the Moroccan people, but because of the image that is given to us. And uh, yeah, but you know, uh, in Morocco we also smoke. Uh, that is tradition there. So I also, uh, when I was young, I started smoking, and and sometimes I did some 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 small things that were not so good, like shoplifting, uh, chewing gum, or something. And uh, you know, you must be. Uh, you must be careful not to end up on the, on the wrong path of life. And uh, during those times, I learned that painting helps me to, to, to stay straight. And that was remarkable. I never expected that, but that was my, it, it was like kind of my, my solution for my own questions, what to do in life. And then I started painting and I became relaxed and I made sure I didn't do any foolish things. And now I'm teaching this to the young people in my city and in my community. So. Uh, so if you really want to say something about the painting, say something about me. Because in the painting there is only red and yellow and, and black paint. But in my life story, there is hope. Fantastic. Nice guy. Krimo Era. Uh, or another man that I met uh, during, this, uh, during this period of meeting the diaspora in the Netherlands uh, was this man, Bashkar Hande. And Bashkar, he said, uh, uh, you're going to travel around the world? Okay, I will participate, but on one condition. And I say, well, okay, what is the condition? He says, well, you must also come to India. Good, no problem, we will do that. I, but I said, it's easier said than done. He says, I will help you. And indeed, a few years later, only two years later, together with Bhaskar Hande, we traveled three months in India and presented in 19 locations. That was fantastic. Meanwhile, he made this painting, because uh, let me let me be honest. Uh, here is the date of this: sixth uh, of December, two thousand four. We started our project in two thousand three, but uh, since nine eleven, the world has changed. Basker lived twenty years in Holland, and twenty years he was an artist. He was a philosopher. He was a poet. He was an artist from Indian descent. But after 9-11, more and more, he just became the foreigner, no matter where from or what does he do. And he made this painting, it's called Color Saga. He mentioned absolutely that during these um, uh, times, the, the, the things has changed. And, but actually, if you want to make a palais uh, of, uh, if you want to make beautiful things, you need a palette with all the colors in it, because it's the colors together that finally make a beautiful painting. Actually, he was one of the first to mention me how much Holland has changed after 9-11, how much he changed from being uh, an artist to being a foreigner, just like that. And uh, Basker helped me also to invite some other artists. For example, this artist, he's fantastic. Uh, his name is Victor Ekpuk. Actually, one of the greatest African artists as far as I can follow art on internet, etc., etc. And uh, <coughs> Victor is a strong uh, man. And uh, I remember we made an appointment to pick up the painting. But two weeks before we were supposed to have a meeting, he sent me the painting by post. So I called him and I said, hey, Victor, what's up? Why did you send it? Yeah, sorry, he says, I needed to go to New York and I don't want it to be too late. So I thought, you know, I send it. Uh, so to be in time, for sure. I said, well, thank you very much for your painting, but there's a little problem. Now, I do not have a painting of the artist with the painting in his hand, and, uh, and I do not, have a, do not have a story. And he says, well, but I have, the, I have the picture with the painting in my hand, and I have the story. I will send it you in two weeks. Don't you worry. Now, I don't know if you know how long it takes five Bosnian minutes but for sure, I, am, I do not know how long it's going to take two Nigerian weeks. So I waited one week, two weeks, and just five minutes later, indeed, there is an email of Victor Ekpuk with a picture and a story, and uh, fantastic. And, and there I read, the title of the painting is called The Evening News. Hmm. Surprise. He has a nice story, but I didn't catch it, really. And then... Uh, Huh, the evening news. Huh. And then I look again to the picture that he sent, and, and there is Victor Ekpuk 
Not like this. Oh. But like this. Ah, oh, shoot. Fish became bomb. Man dropped that. With the painting in the background, this becomes a television. And then if we look at the scribbling on the background, all of a sudden we see tanks and airplanes and guns and not so happy people and his autograph, Victor Ekpuk. <laughs> And he made a little story like this. He says, uh, some people believe that 5% of civilization must be in war in, in order to stimulate the development of our civilizations. He says, I don't believe this, but, su but some people do. And suppose it's true. Just imagine. Suppose it's true. And then what happens? After one day of uh, long work or after a hard day of long study, we go home, we put on the television, and we project this terrible war to 100% of the people, while only maximum 5% needs it. What a stupid tradition, he says. I hope we're going to use the television for some better news. And that's why usually we put it away on this way, because today is a nice day. And uh, however, you know, when you, tell, uh, when you collect stories of the diaspora, you must realize there is not only a lot of foreign people with, uh, with interesting reasons to go and live somewhere else, but there is also a lot of people forced to live somewhere else. For example, this man. Uh, we had, especially in that time, we speak now here about 2004, 2005, we had this uh, big diaspora from, from former Yugoslavia in Holland. Balkan people, Bosnians. For example, this guy. His name is Almir Dervi Dervizevic. And actually, right after the war, I was working in Bosnia. And, uh, and Almir, he is a smart guy. Just before the war started, just before, he already left because he thought, this is not going to be my war. I better go somewhere else and see if life b brings good things. So uh, he did, and he went to Holland, and uh, the war took five years. After the war, I went there to work there with a humanitarian organization, and, uh, and, and, and Almir was visiting his town, his hometown, for the first time since the beginning of the war. And I was his host. So it was kind of a strange situation. And it was in the last few months that I was there, so I told him, when I'm finished, with my project, with my work in Sarajevo, I will come back to Holland and start a project like this with all the paintings. And he says, wow, fantastic idea. Very good. You know, I like it very much because now I am a student at the academy in Holland and I want to become an art teacher, especially on conceptual art. Good. And uh, indeed, a uh, half year later, I was in Holland and another few months later, I started this project. So I went to look for him and for his telephone number, and I found it, and I called him. And uh, however, there's one little thing that I need to, to explain, maybe. Do, do you know anything about Balkans, by the way? Huh? It's more or less the same as between Holland and Belgium. The Dutch, they make jokes about Belgians that they're not so smart, and, and, and the Belgians make jokes about the Dutch that they think they are. But so in such way, people always make jokes about each other. And this happened also in Yugoslavia. In Slovenia, it was, for example, said they're a little bit self-minded. And uh, Serbian people are kind of tough, you know. And the Montenegrin people are supposed to be lazy. But I don't know if they're lazy. They just quit working when they earned enough. That's something else. And anyway, and about Bosnian people, it is told they talk too much. So maybe that's where I learned it. Anyway, I was going to find his telephone number, and I did. And I have him on the phone, and I said, Hey, Almir, how are you? And he says, Ah, there you are, my old friend. Long time no see, how are you? And, uh, and he keeps on talking and talking, and, uh, and, and actually, uh, and after 10 minutes, he says, Oh, uh, please, uh, sorry, come in. So then we went inside, and then uh, you drink coffee, but not normal coffee, you drink Bosnian coffee, and Bosnian coffee, everybody has his own tradition, and you have to speak about it. The same with the cookies and, and with the snaps, and, and uh, so we're talking and talking, and, uh, and after a while I tell him, hey, Almir, we also have to speak about the painting, eh? because today I have eight appointments all around Holland to pick up the painting, so uh, 
we also have to speak about the painting, right? He says, sure, no problem. And immediately he started an enormous theory about this painting. So I took my little book and, and I write and I write everything he's saying. But he was keep on talking and talking and he talked for a long time, you know. I started to write smaller and smaller but because my book is a little small actually as well. But he keeps on talking and he keeps on talking. And, and after a while I said, wait a minute, Almir, please, please, one, one second. You know, this guy, he knows very little about paintings. I'm a rock and roll musician, so it's really difficult to speak about a painting I cannot see. And Almir looks at me and he says, actually, you're right. One second. And he goes out of the room and... Uh, uh, he, he goes out and, and, and he's in, a, in another room stumbling and he comes back with uh, he comes back in the room where we are and with the panel in his hand it's completely completely wet of dark blue paint and there's some newspapers here and then he holds it to me and he says but but how many, how much time do you actually have and I said, well, normally I spend one hour, but you've been already talking an hour and a half, so uh, that doesn't matter. But So if I go to my next appointment in a half an hour, then I will be not too much too late for my next appointment, okay? And he looks at me and he says, half an hour. Half an hour only. In that case, you better be patient. Please hold it. And he gives the panel to me, completely wet of paint and he goes out to his to his other room again and he stumbles a little bit and he comes back with a little pot of yellow paint and a brush and, and, and he takes the painting and he makes pssst, this little point there and he looks at me completely satisfied and he says so now I'm finished and I said really he says yeah man that's it I said I said this is it yeah man that's that's it man that's completely it do you see it? I said, no, actually, I don't see it. Really? You don't see it? Man, that, this is completely it. Check this out, man. And I said, I'm and I said sorry, you know, I, I do not really see it. And he also started to be a little bit in doubt. And he says, well, maybe you're right. Maybe this is not it yet. I said, what do you mean? Well, I, 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 know, uh, I know a new title for the painting. Uh, the, the painting is called The Beginning. So the beginning of what? He says, look, the beginning of everything I wanted to tell you, my old friend, and I hope, my friend, next time when you come to the house of an old friend, take a little bit more time than half an hour because this is not working. <laughs> how to spend your time well, this is how we explained. But we were already spending our time well, isn't it? So I have for you... Uh, uh, two, three more little uh, stories, because, let us be honest, as I told you, when you go and ask the diaspora in your country, you meet a lot of people who might come to your country for a holiday or for a good work, but there's also people who just come to your country because they had to run away from their own place. In Bosnia, there was a place like this. This man, Senat Alic, he also is from Bosnia, from the Balkans area, and uh, he was... Uh, strongly emotionally hurt by the whole situation and he made this painting about it it's called something like a, something like a chicken woman huh? actually what you see here he says is the following as you maybe know refugees in Holland are not allowed to work they're not allowed to work and not allowed to study so what can they do they can only sit in their refugee center and, and spend the little money that they get in the refugee center supermarket and uh, wait. Sometimes they wait one year, two years, eight years, 12 years. Nobody knows. And uh, so it's really tough for people who are from another part of the world to come to our place, to come to our country, get some food and shelter, but are not even allowed to do anything in return. Except for this one day, there was chicken plague. There was chicken plague in Holland, and you must realize that Holland, which is a country of an enormous amount of agricultural industry, I think we have something like 120 million chicken in our country. And since there was chicken plague, these chicken had to be killed within no time. And that day 
Only those days the refugees were allowed to work. And since then, he says, when I paint chicken, these are refugees. This is a metaphor for refugees. And originally, they do not belong here. Like this lady, she's obviously not a Dutch lady. She also doesn't belong here. And what does she have to do if she wants to go home or want to go somewhere else? She is always in trouble. She has no permission. She has no passport. She has no money. She has no destination. So what can you do? What can refugees in this situation do if there is something that will give them hope for a life? Actually, the only thing what they can do is try to learn to fly and get into freedom again. And, uh, and that's the, the, the title of this painting, to learn to fly. That's how you find your freedom if you are caged and locked up in a place far away from home. Then uh, you have to go and uh, find creative solutions. So, actually I have two paintings that is because uh, we met this guy, his name is Asad Malik, he's from Tartaria. And, and Asad Malik, we were, we were on this uh, presentation in a place called Hardenberg, of all places. And we were with the big truck. And I must say, you know, normally we are on festivals, which is always good because people pay entrance and want to see everything and, and also want to see our project. Or we are at schools, which is always fine because children are always interested. We are often on the street, which is always fine, because people who don't like paintings keep on moving, and people who do like paintings, they come and have a look. It filters by itself, so it's, it's actually always good. But sometimes we are in shopping malls, and they ask us in shopping malls to come and make some animation. But to be honest, I don't like that very much, because, uh, for example, we give these little cards, pick your favorite painting, but people come up with the same excuse. No, the parking meter is running, we have no time. Uh, you have time and priority. In, in Holland, that is, it sounds like you have tight and prioritite. So that sounds good, actually. There's time or priority. They, they do not go together, you know. And uh, so actually, only people without money in their pocket, they come and have a look. That's the other problem in shopping malls. Everybody thinks we want to sell them paintings, but we don't sell paintings, we sell stories. And, and, and we sell postcards sometimes. But we sell stories, and we already sold the story, that's why we are in the shopping mall. So indeed, only the people without money in their pockets, they come and have a look. And on such way, there is this guy, quite a big guy, with huge hands and a big face, a Russian face, and. And, and you see him coming, and the closer he came to our big truck, the smaller he became. He says, check this out, look at this. What, what a colors, what a creativity, what an, what an energy, what a time people spent here. Fantastic, what is this? And I said, this is the mobile exhibition, show your hope. You just show your hope on a little panel. And, uh, and he fell particularly in love with this painting. And I can imagine, because this is a fantastic painting, uh, made by a man called Arif Dame. And Arif Dame, he's from Afghanistan. And uh, so I told him the story. Huh? And uh, I can tell you the story as well. This is actually fun. Check this out. When you go to, uh, to a man from Afghanistan, the, the guy lives in Arnhem. So he's part of this selection international artists living in the Netherlands. So when you go to a guy from Afghanistan to pick up a painting, you do not get a painting, you get a cup of tea and another cup of tea. And meanwhile, I was in his house and I saw all his paintings green, green. He was just in Holland for not such a long time and he loved the color green. And, uh, and he saw that the, the painting was somewhere in the corner and he saw, I saw it, so he came up to me or he, he, he came to pick it up and he put it right in front of my face. Like this. And I said, whoa, what is this, man? And wow. I said, it looks like a bomb. He says, but it is a bomb. And I said, but how can you make bomb bigger than your tree? Especially in my language, that is impossible because tree is B-O-O-M and a bomb is B-O-M. So how can you make your bomb bigger than your trees? And he says, that is only possible because something is not correct here. But he, he didn't really want to uh, 
to explain too much about it. So we keep on talking about other things, and we have we spoke about this voting ballot cards, and uh, and I said to him, I wouldn't be surprised if this painting is going to be a popular painting, because every time when we when we make this popular vote for fun, a painting with a lot of red turns out to be the most popular. And the guy looks at me and he says, hey, look, I am from Afghanistan, but I have studied in Kabul, in Leningrad, in Petersburg, in Arnhem. I am now teacher at the Art Academy. I know these things. So he says, strange, isn't it? We look at... I, I know that, that our eyes, not only the eyes of bulls, but the eyes of people also are attracted to red. Strange, isn't it, he says. So we look at this, well, actually, this is beautiful. We take care of this, well, actually, we should take care of this. Here we put our attention, well, actually, we should put our attention here. He says something is completely not correct here. And, and I, I hope the, the audience can still accept it, but I added the title of the painting, and the painting is called Is It Actually Safe Here? Oh, this is a complete, full-weight, heavy painting. So, and, and this guy from, from Tartaria, he fell in love with the painting from Afghanistan. And, uh, and, I, and, uh, and this guy says, what, have you, all the, have you been all the way to Afghanistan? I said, no, actually, the guy lives in Arnhem, he is part of this postcard box, the world in Netherlands. Oh, this guy says, but I'm from Tartaria and I'm a painter as well, I'm also allowed to participate. I said, theoretically, yes. So do you have a little painting, do you have a little panel for me then? And I said, well, you know what, <laughs> when, when such a big guy asks you two good questions, maybe you should not refuse too quickly. Huh? So I gave him a little panel and I told him, take your time, Azad, and when you're finished, I'm not going to come back to pick it up here on the other side of Holland, but send it to me with your address and your telephone number. As soon as I've received it, I will call you and then because I need your story, not, I'm not going to make up my own story. Azad understood completely. And so he took the panel and uh, a few weeks later I already got this little painting in my post box. Check this out. It says Azad Malik Art Studio with this little house in 15, seven, 1751. And this is in Omme, a little village which is kind of tourist village in the north of Holland. I've been there a few times because I live nearby, and the funny thing was, I have a little museum at home, which is also a white house, but it's more steep. My house is from uh, um, 1884. Anyway, so we're on the telephone chit-chatting a little bit about the painting, and, uh, and what, <laughs> it was funny. One moment I asked him, hey, Azad, is this your new art studio? And all of a sudden, Azad says, totally in panic, says, no, man. The painting was supposed to be about hope, isn't it? <laughs> so, besides all the serious stories, luckily we also get a lot of stories with a little humor that relativates and that keeps us a little bit in balance between the tough life and the beautiful life, between the bad life and the good life, between the boring times and the times you're enjoying yourself. And... Um, <laughs> Actually, in one of the next stories, um, the, the next story is going to be a story about Balkans. And then we shall see what immigration actually can bring on positiveness. But we already know this, don't we? So let's not ask ourselves stupid questions. Let's ask ourselves good questions and enjoy the answers. Have a nice day. See you around next time.